Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 on today we're back for another brand new video and aye, it's about that time that the Rangers player's bottle truly crashes. If you think back, I didn't make a preview video for this video for a couple reasons. One of them, I was getting my wisdom tooth removed today. Wisdom tooth removed. Me, troops. I don't know about that one. Two, I've already spoken about this game twice, you know what I mean? Three strikes and you're out, Dundee. Or is it? Rangers Football Club and three... And this is probably the most serious one for this, is I didn't like to be overly negative or anything like that, you know what I mean? I didn't want to compound and just be negative for negative sake, and I found myself in this position after the Ross County game saying what I said and feeling like that was it, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I mean? I saw the blank, you know what I mean? You look in the eyes, it was like Mike Tyson back in the boxing days when he looked something in the eyes, and if they looked away first, he knew he had them beat dead to rights and I saw this Rangers team blink versus Ross County and I didn't want to come in on the Tuesday or the aye, Tuesday preview and sit and say I think it could be done ladies and gentlemen because there is something just missing in the team you know what I mean and that's been proven to be right today and apologies for being negative and maybe having that mindset but you can just see why you know what I mean this isn't my first ring around the rosy troops I've seen this group of players do the same thing time upon time and guess what I'll be there next year doing the exact same thing loving life and being happy because it's all about moments ladies and gentlemen be nice if there was made of them but it's all about enjoying the moments so I'll be there next season screaming this screaming that but by goodness gracious does this team not just show the only consistent thing they are good it is bottling it and filling their nappies and I imagine there'll be a lot of people coming here for maybe a rant and raving scathing review of the game and I'll probably eventually lead into a scathing of a couple individual players but I'm not really this because Sunday was a shock to me because again I was completely in denial about what this team actually was built in to their DNA. I was ignoring the fact that all the new players that was bringing the new results and bringing the fresh ideas were getting chipped away with injury, with injury, I wasn't realising mere doors were being opened up for the serial losers who's continued to fail this club for the last couple of years. I didn't pay attention to that, ladies and gentlemen, and by God, I've been given a stark reminder. But again, the reason I'm not sitting here ranting and raving is, truthfully, this is near a surprise. Because winners win at the end of the day and losers will find ways and reasons for not winning games and that's just sort of how this feels because if you look at the run Rangers have been on since that blistering 5-0 win versus Hearts and in that 2-1 win at Rugby Park rolling up the sleeves going to difficult places playing difficult teams we have played Mullerwell we have played Celtic we have played Ross County and we've played Dundee. That is 12 points available, crunch time at the end of a season. Do you know how many points this Rangers team that was handed the opportunity of taking the lead in terms of league title because of how poor Celtic were for a couple of months? Do you know how many points they took out of those 12 available? Well, you should know because we've lived every minute. It is two of the 12. Two points out of 12, and I'm not even looking at Celtic, right? I want to look at Ross County, I want to look at Dundee, and I want to look at Mullerwell, right? I'm not wanting to talk about Celtic because Celtic are what they are. They're serial winners. They dominate Scottish football with trophy after trophy for a reason. They've got winners in their teams. Players as well and accept the responsibility. They can take the hard punches. They didn't just excel and play well when everything's gone their way. They've got a wee bit of sun and they seem to bounce back and win trophies. Didn't want to be saying it, but that is the truth. But I want to look in and narrow in in Ross County, Dundee, in Mullerwell. They are three teams with a budget of not only a packet of crisps, but their teams are filled with guys for lower leagues and academy players. And all this conversation be like, well, you've got to give this or this or this or this. No, we done it, ladies and gentlemen. That should be a given. No disrespect to either or three of the teams, I should say. When you look at your players, and if you total up three or four of our highest earners and compare it to the entire 18s, they some of the squads that we can't even beat when it push comes to shove it would really sicken you to your stomach because that's how I feel when I actually look at it I know people could come with excuses and try and make excuses for us well we've got a couple of players injured that doesn't even matter we're playing guys at 16 17 year olds making their debuts at Ibrox and we can't even win games of football none of that matters again it's up here and it's in here when the play when the whistle actually goes and we've got too many players that again are just great when things are going their way but the tiniest and I'm talking about the tiniest bump in the road they completely bottle it. You might not like that I'm saying that, but explain that run to me. Look me in the eyes and explain that run to me without mentioning the word bottle jobs or just filling 
your nappies because that's what I've got. I like a lot of these players. I've enjoyed moments some of these players have actually given me. But at the end of the day, winners win, losers lose. And what we've got, ladies and gentlemen, clearly, when you look at the title running, if you will, there's too many losers. And that's why I can sit here without a blistering face and shouting and swearing that because again it's not a surprise to me, this isn't a shock to me, I've seen this story too many times and again I was blind to the fact that Mayor and the Mayor of the Old Guard were starting to get involved in games and the Mayor, it started to brittle away, we started to we just kept ignoring problems, I should say. The centre-back partnership, Disney work. I've told you this for many, many times. We've talked about it too many times. It doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen. Golden Suter is no good enough. The set-pieces are absolutely dreadful. For a team that averages as many set-pieces we day, no score them. It's embarrassing, but it's never actually worked on. It's never tweaked and changes. Players' forms can absolutely plummet out of the building, but they never get replaced. They never get dropped or anything like that. And again, we need to be comfortable. We need to find a place and understand there is a place in football to have a conversation about a manager without wanting them sacked. What he's done with the losers in this Rangers team is incredible. The turnaround that he did that was incredible. That, but that doesn't mean he's bulletproof and immune to criticism. No, because for me, I feel like he has got the last couple of starting 11s very, very wrong. All this chopping and changing, trying to bring people up to speed, and that's been an absolute disaster for any momentum we were building. Going back to the likes of the Hearts game and everything like that, the rip-roaring momentum that we had playing people in the right positions, it was fantastic. It was great to actually watch. Then we start going here, there, here, there, and it's became an absolute mess, and I know people say, oh, well, he's been forced into a couple of changes here, there, but again, Mullerwell, Dundee, and Ross County, you're going to look me in the eyes and start talking about players missing, or in that when you consider what we've got available and what they've got available, come on now, let's actually have a real conversation here, I just feel like Clement has made these mistakes as well, and that's fair, he's trying to get to know these players, I get what he's saying in press conferences, I mean, I still watched it, even though I wasn't doing a video, and talking about the Dundee, um, after the Ross County game for this one, talking about, he's going to learn a lot of about these players now, it's been the toughest time, blah, 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 and I'm just like, really? Do we need to do this all the time? Surely when you come into a job, you're wondering why you're there, troops. You know what I mean? Clement, the reason you're there is because the players you're putting a trust in a week in and week out has got the last two managers sacked, mate. That's why you're actually here. You mind just skip to the end of every single player's re a manager's reign and see the couple of weeks of performances, couple of months of performances. You'll start to understand why you're actually in a job. You don't need to learn it yourself. Trust us. We'll tell you as fans who are actually in it and who aren't it. We've tried to warn over the last couple of months. We've been ignored and then we're just making mistakes like this. And again, bumps and everything like that happened in a season absolutely but Mullerwell was the sickener that's when you make the realisation that A, B and C shouldn't be playing but with Dinny keep rolling the dice keep trusting the yins I mean the guys like Silva he hasn't kicked a ball for donkeys ladies and gentlemen this guy has been absolutely horrific the left hand side of the Rangers has been so easily countered it is absolutely devastating every single time watching it but none Changes. Oh, Silva does this. Silva, he doesn't do nothing, lads. He's out there just doing cardio. He's tricking everybody. He's just running about for no actual reason. He should have been bombed out the squad weeks ago, but he's no. He's rewarded with starts. He's rewarded with starts. The decision to play the likes of Cantwell, Lawrence and Silva together. Now, Cantwell and Lawrence are the same type of player. Creative, like to get on the ball, like to play in the half turn, try to bring people into the game. I think most people would actually agree with that. Playing one at a time was what was actually working when we were coming in. One would come in the sixth minute, iron, would play games, would start games well, would end games well, we were rotating. Now we're playing them both at the same time. And if it isn't so glaring that it didn't work the last time we actually tried it, or the time before that we tried it, or the time before that, or the time before that we tried it. But then we've got Silva as well, who wants to do the exact same thing. Three players that like to get on the ball and do the exact same thing. No wonder the formation is an absolute mess and there's no space to do nothing. Three of our attacking four, pretty much, all want to do the exact same thing. But again, that's where the word self-inflicted comes into and it's a shame that it's actually infected our boy, Phil Clement. It's every, in every aspect of your club, 
poor recruitment policy, getting strikers that can't score goals, get defenders that can't defend, and then the, the whole set piece mess. And now I've got a manager that picks the same players air and air again, has to sub them off in the 50th, 55th minute every single game because they're no actually performing. We just didn't learn a lesson, ladies and gentlemen. But I clearly still believe Phil Claymont is the man for the job and everything like that. I'm not saying anything away from him. I just, I just feel this is all needless, what we're actually watching right now. And we're talking about changes and bumps and learning. We've learned. Ask the fans. Watch the tape. Watch how you go in your job. I'll tell you how you're actually here. And aye, it's just a shame, ladies and gentlemen, because I really believed we had a chance this year. Maybe that was just a fool's goal. I just thought, you know, a chance to go this, chance to do that. But again, the players reverted back to the actual type and you can see why they've cost managers previous jobs because their expectations get right up there and then the players falter back to what they are and then we're saying, what? It's the manager's fault. Maybe it isn't, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe it's the ends we sing songs and love and cheer for week in, week out. Maybe it's time to look and narrow in on them because it's certainly no Clement's fault. That man's clearly a manager. What he's managed today, come in and win a trophy already, get us in this position, see you some results and everything like that. He's clearly the right man in there, but have we got the right men on the middle of the part? I don't think so anymore, ladies and gentlemen. And big decisions need to be made in terms of the likes of Golds and, and that. Now, again, I'm still a Tav guy. I know people shout at me and everything like I still feel like you need the likes of Tav in terms of his goals because you take him out the team. Where is anybody else? Look at their goals tally. They're nobody anywhere actually near what he's going to do. I'd love somebody can take a set piece now and again, right enough. But I, I'm looking at Goldson. I'm, I'm pretty much looking at the entire back three, like in terms of Goldson, Suter, and I believe we need a left back that's a bit more reliable than Ridvan Yilmaz, unfortunately. Again, he was 50 50 10 days ago. What's he now? 80 20, the opposite. Why? What's actually happening there? We can't, I'm not even want to talk about Barisic. He didn't play the day. Well, what a surprise. He already done his damage on Sunday. You're looking in the midfield, Lonnie's starting to go back doing but Maybe I'm just stupid, but I'm like, when Lonnie actually had a midfield partner beside him, he was playing well. Now he's playing with likes of Tom Lawrence, who's running up there with Cantwell, and they're both running around each other like they're singing on the playground. Where's his midfield partner? The Amandi's missing. Right now, and maybe the Amandi would make a massive difference because there is absolutely zero midfield. And maybe I'm being too nice to Lunny in that aspect, but I just look at it and I just think if he actually had a midfielder next to him, maybe we'd see some. We keep trying with Dowell because Clements clearly fell out with Raskin and everything like that, but it just doesn't work. You probably want to put Sterling there, but you've got to put Sterling at left back because you can't trust Barisic and the place and everything is a mess and aye, I don't know what you do ladies and gentlemen but we've got strikers who didn't score goals we've now got a midfield that can't dominate midfields against guys that's on 10 for their actual wages and we've got a defence that can't defend it's unbelievable we were on a title race this long, isn't it? <laughs> but I guess I'm here to talk about the game, ladies and gentlemen, so we should get in it. And I do feel like there is massive differences and actually to a detriment to this Rangers team than Ross County, who I thought were absolutely excellent on the day. Rangers played just as poorly as we saw on Sunday. Reaction. Bumps in the road. They'll do this. They'll no done nothing. You know what I mean? We've seen this story actually before. Rangers played just as poorly as they did on Sunday. The only difference was Dundee's quality wasn't up to the standard of Ross County. And I feel like I'm fair to say that. I'm one of the few guys that's actually backed Dundee in terms of what they've done in the park. I thought they've been great. I think the off the park stuff's overshadowed what a great year they're actually doing. But they've not really got anything really to play for anyway. They were just sort of going through the motions, ladies and gentlemen. They were just pinging a wee passes here or there, having a wee shot for here. It didn't matter to them. It wasn't keeping their S SPFL team in the actual league like it was Ross County and that's where you have to look at Rangers and say even a team that's just turning up and just having a bit of fun with you is actually having their way with you as well is there just anybody in that dressing room with something to say anything that's actual truthful instead of oh we're disappointed with this or oh, there's they're no other day on the park I know they're sitting there they're looking at the stands and they're all putting the wee sad faces on and everyone like and be like I tried. If everyone collectively tried as much as they tried to portray at the end of the game, we wouldn't have been in the position that we're in with two points from the 12 apps available. But again, pulling it in to this game, not taking anything away for Dundee, but again, they were just almost having fun out there, you know what I mean? They're just doing keepy uppies at the beach with their old flip-flops on. There's nothing at stake for them, yet we still couldn't take that team 
to actually task. No, it was Dundee that created the first opportunity and probably should have scored 40 seconds into the game. That is three consecutive matches. The first team to create the biggest opportunity against us takes less than a minute to breach your defence. You have to sit and read, this guy's good or this guy's good defensively. He's actually trying to kill me, ladies and gentlemen, because that's what it feels like. The entire defence is guff. We need two new centre-backs. We didn't need one, please. Let's let that actually go. It is dreadful. The marking, the tracking. Yes, they may be good at coming out and maybe good at doing that, but the actual job of defending, being commanding and being even a bit of a threat to the opposition striker add a bit of presence is null. Everyone is licking their lips at running at Golton. Everyone's licking their lips at running at John Souter. It's no nice to say, but they are. We are a wounded animal back there, and that is proven with the fact that the last three consecutive matches, they have breached their defence in less than a minute to create a clear goal-scoring opportunity. And aye, we were very, very lucky with that as the striker pulls it just wide. And I thought, oh my God, you're joking me after everything we had heard in the press conference and everything, and I thought Clement would get in boys' faces and come rip-roaring, but I knew it after a minute. I genuinely did. It was done. But that's not to say we didn't create some chances, because we did, ladies and gentlemen. We should do when you've got what we've actually got available, especially when six minutes into the game, Roof takes a half-decent turn and actually turns their captain, or uh, Sean, I say, actually injured, just turns them on the surf, surface, ends up going, I think his foot actually gets caught on the surface, but I'm not getting into that conversation or anything like that. Ends up getting injured. They're m missing their captain and their centre-back, their best centre back yet we couldn't breach their actual defences, honestly mortifying and I just, I would hate to be in that dressing room because I could not look at a single one of them, truthfully I really couldn't, but there was a couple of opportunities, first in is played beautifully from Todd Cantwell, slides in our boy Seema that runs down the, way, down the right hand side, playing in his wrong position to facilitate Silva, I feel like I'm losing maps, can we not just go back to what works, you know what I mean, Silva, um, Seema, sorry, on the left, and maybe Rabi on the right where he played in Germany. Maybe Ross, McCausland out on the right hand side. Maybe Son, actually out there. But no, we've got to try and shoehorn, shoehorn players in to what makes Silva happy. Are we actually having a laugh? But anyway, the ball runs down the right hand side for Seema. Seema tries to hit it across the goalie, but it's actually a good, if not comfortable, save. The next chance came from Seema as well as he's played in by Kamal Roof down the right hand side. Again, it's a bit of a snapshot that's well saved by the goalie. Now, there was a couple possible penalties in the first half. First one, uh, I can't remember the exact Dundee player is. He kind of chips up and it looks like it hits John Souter's arm. Now, I've not seen it for another angle if it is definitely in the box, but I was nervous about it, ladies and gentlemen. And honestly, it's more of a penalty than half the ones we concede in European football, like the one we conceded in Benfica. This one's more a penalty than that. But again, I hold my hand up every time I say, I don't know what the handball rule is anymore. Should it have been a penalty? Should it know have been a penalty? I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, all I'll say is, I was pretty nervous when I first seen it, I went, oh no, here we go, but there was no penalty given, and then a couple, about five minutes later, there was another corner that I thought was a penalty, and I was like, oh, it was the exact opposite, remember I was nervous about the Dundee penalty, I was excited, I went, oh, they're going to check that, as a corner comes in, Seema, the boy's riding him like sea biscuit. he gets pulled to the ground, I'm saying, well, that's a penalty kick, that's going to be a penalty kick, we got away with that after a poor start, it's not a penalty kick, the referee has restarted, and again, that's just me not knowing the rules, I don't understand why that's not a penalty, and again, I was extremely nervous about the possible penalty for Dundee as well, but aye, zero for two in terms of me, in terms of in, <laughs> thoughts regarding VAR incidents usual for this guy. But Dundee did have the ball in the back of net in the 21st minute and the way it comes is a lazy tackle for John Lundstrom at the edge of the box allows um, the midfielder that I've been very impressed with a lot this season, McEwen, he's so good in there, he's so talented, hits a really good free kick that's fantastically saved by Butland. He then gets up and makes another save as always, this Rangers team's just sitting there like, oh we're we prima donnas, we only like it when we play well and we're winning players of the month and managers of the month and everything like that. When it gets hard we like to shrivel, they're just standing there doing nothing and they end up getting, a, I think, another save off Butlin, and then it ends up getting bundled over a line, but it's correctly ruled out from VAR, as the goal is clearly given as offside after the free kick was took. Nothing controversial there, was offside, was given as offside, we all move on for there, and I'm thinking, by God, we got away with that, can we at least show a response? They've been in on goal, they could have had a penalty kick, they've had the ball in the back and it, how many smear, how much smear does this Rangers team need to wake them up for this embarrassing just shriveled coma that they seem to actually be in. Well, it wasn't enough. There was, what, what, a um, Tavernier free kick for 28 yards. 
that was gone white that the goalie saved to make sure he was on the telly for sports scene the night. That was it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. In terms of the first half, and again, for the fourth consecutive match, I was tearing my hair out unhappy and wanting subs at half time. I just felt the balance was wrong. We need some strength in the middle of the park. It can't just be Lundstrom completely left on his own. And again, I'm not covering for him or anything like that, but he was completely abandoned in the middle of the park with two players on him every time. As Lawrence went up there with Cantwell, and Cantwell was beside Silva, and Silva was next to the two. It just isn't working. It's so painful. And thank God for Dujon Sterling, by the way. Didn't have his greatest game with the ball at his feet, but see the couple with last that challenges he had to make. I'm talking about a Rangers team that just got beat off Ross County, and I'm talking about our backup right back that's playing at left back, needing to make vital subs, uh, slide tackles and interceptions, or Dundee is counting us. Does anyone else see the actual problem here? But nothing, unbelievably, is done at half time. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, none. Happens on the part. There's no reaction. There's no bite. There's no grabbing people by the scruff of the neck and standing up and being counted for. No, we had to wait 15 long minutes before changes what should have been made at half time was eventually made as Roof, who again wasn't he deemed good enough for the bench versus Celtic at home. Must win. He was not deemed good enough. He was fit. Wasn't he deemed good enough? Wasn't he deemed good enough to play against Hibs, ladies and gentlemen? But because dessa has been that pish lately, he's flung right into the actual deep end and he was a ghost, you know what I mean? I like his finishing ability, I like this, but he's not a hold-up player. See this lump ball football that we do is built for Morelos. It's built for Dessers, ladies and gentlemen. It's not built for someone like Kamar Roof and I felt rotten for him. We're just booting balls up there. He must be thinking, we used to play actually really good football and have people in and around the box. What is that? So I know he just sort of spawns in every time he's fit like Mike Myers whenever someone's running away from him, but he must be just thinking to himself, last time I spawned here we were playing nice football, what's actually going on? Maybe I'll just fall away into the darkness again. He came off, Silva obviously came off, and for again he's raging, going off, but the one that got me the most was Todd Cantwell off for Lawrence, and I don't get this at all. You can call me a fanboy, you can do what you want, say what you want, but I truly believe Tom Lawrence has been one of our worst players for the last six weeks, and I mean worst Ladies and gentlemen, I'm putting Barisic in there, I'm putting Lunny in there, I'm putting Tavin, I'm putting Golden, who's been horrific. I'm talking about worst performing players per minute, touchy the ball. Lawrence Huss to be up there, but somehow he's got good PR and too many people like him. Why? He's dreadful. Call out, he's been dreadful. He's nonchalant in the games, kicking me balls here or there, and it is absolutely dreadful. And if he had, if his name was Cantwell dropping in those performances, it'd be absolutely torched at the stake right now. But because it's Tom Lawrence and there seems to be a lot of protection actually for him, people aren't known it. He's been your worst player in my opinion. You can shout me in the comment section, but I, I could not believe that substitution because again, Cantwell wasn't great, but at least he gets on and tries to drive it. People try to make things. What is Lawrence doing? He's flattering to deceive, and you saw that in the 60th minute, as he should do better with his opportunity inside the box, but it's just kind of, he just throws a leg at it, it hits the arm of the Dundee player, that's never a penalty, see I'm just doing here, I'm not wanting to get into the penalty conspiracies or anything like that, there's nothing in this, hits there and it ends up going at the goalie, but again, a player has a belly, why is he slashing at that? For that close. Do you know what I mean? That's what I've actually got to ask. You then had Dowell that was picking out a good ball right to Dessers who runs his man, cuts inside and has a shot, but it's more doing the centre than in the top left-hand corner. I know what people will try to say in commentary and Twitter, but it's never gone in the top corner. It's landing in the middle of the goal. Do you know what I mean? Just go like that and you're actually saving it and that's truthfully it in terms of chances. 70th minute there. That was it. The team that came closest to scoring and should have scored was Dundee. 76th minute, the whip a ball in. Sterling's had to come right into the centre to cover for Suter, who's then covering for Golton, who Golton's then covering for Tavernier. And it's like every game, every, you'd beat the press of Rangers. You've got everybody that just shuffles their one, and then there's just a massive open gap for Jordan McGee. McGee sorry. He tries to whip it to the back post, but thankfully it's headed away by Lonnie. It then doesn't go anywhere, as you can imagine. It comes straight back, and John Suter ends up falling on it as he blocks an attempted shot, I actually believe. But aye, that could have been absolutely devastating. We could have conceded right there, and should we have? Aye, ladies and gentlemen. But we rode our luck in that occasion. Did we respond in the last 15 minutes? Did we have anything? Rabi had a shot. Rabi had a shot. That was it. A laddie that's been criticised for the help is the only one that's willing to turn up here and step up and try and have a shot. Everyone else passing the buck for side to side, side to side, side to side. There was a Tavernier set piece that went wide, but that was it, ladies and gentlemen. It was the most uninspired performance 
I've ever seen. Genuinely. Uninspired. They never wanted that for the first whistle. I felt it. You could see it. Anyone, I'd love to know your opinion. One minute into that game, the way they were passing about backwards and just kind of jogging about, did you believe that was a response for getting beat 3-2 of Ross County and giving and thrown away the chance to close in at the top of the league that I could have allowed you to go top at the table? Did you see a team that believed they could win a title? I never, ladies and gentlemen, and it should be studied, this Rangers team, because by God do they give you false hope and then they instantly rip away with embarrassing, bottling performances. And I, Clement and Big Cop, as we like to call them, just clear them out. You know what I mean? It's been too many years, too many opportunities. Thanks for the memories. All the best. As the players have personally punched their own ticket, in my personal opinion. I know some people might say it's only three points and we could do this and we could do that, that. They've got to go to rugby park. They've got to play hearts. I get all that and I get the F scenarios if we were playing well. Ladies and gentlemen, just look at the run we are on. Do you know what I mean? That's where my problems end up coming. Mullerwell, Ross County, Dundee, we've got a point. Out of that, I can't get behind that. I can't cheerlead. I can't confuse myself. I say, oh, they might do this or they might do that, but I don't trust my own team right now, and that's an a very, very unfortunate place to actually be. We keep getting told we need everything for everyone, and we need this for the crowd, and the crowd needs to do this, the crowd needs this, the fans need to do that. How about the players go in the park and do their jobs? And then you know what? The crowd will respond to that, and the crowd will do theirs. I wish they would just start focusing on their own jobs instead of wondering what we and everything are getting up to. Let's see it actually on the part by. It's a massive, massive three points because again, look at the run we're on. Look at how we're playing. Is it inspired? Are we unlucky? No, and no, we're playing dreadfully. And the worst thing is, the worst thing is, ladies and gentlemen. We're only getting worse than we were actually playing. And aye, it's an absolute shocker for where we were about a month, month and a half ago. Aye, but shows you what happens when the pressure is turned up. People can reach it. Some people can get to the boil. Others can't. But that's how I feel, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very disappointed. But I'm not shocked as I've seen this story far, far too many, too many times, I should say. And aye, sorry if the, the video's been a wee bit slurry and everything like that. Again, hopefully there's no blood slitting about the old Nash up. The wisdom tooth is gone. There is stuff going in the old move, but aye, there we are, ladies and gentlemen. There's the video. I will see you for a semi final. You buzzing? What's messed up as I will be 24 hours before it, but I'm not right now. But till then, I've been CJ Over92. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye bye.